everybody, Keith Hilson in the Schmidt Music Trombone Shop back with another accessory review for you. And this is a particular item. It's actually been out, while in various forms, it's been out for decades, but the latest iteration of this accessory has been out for a handful of months. Um, we got our first batch in a little bit ago and I just haven't had a chance to do a video yet. And I thought this was a perfect time to share, especially with school getting back in session, with um, a lot of us practicing in in our rooms, uh, in dorm rooms, uh, early in the morning, late at night, doing all that hard work. So, so specifically, I'm talking about the new Yamaha Silent Brass here. So this is the SB5J. So um, I, you know, many of us are, of course, familiar with the Silent Brass uh, system from Yamaha. I remember when it came out in the, um, I think it was late 90s, maybe really early, early 2000s. Um, I ended up getting my first one and it's gone through you know, a few different iterations over the years. Um, it was a handful of years ago that they came out with the, the SB the, or the 5B, the new version of this here. The old version, if you remember, was a very kind of long torpedo shaped mute. Um, and, but you know, still had the sound module, all that stuff there. And so they did a redesign here to uh, try to lighten up the mute design, make it so it wasn't so as bell heavy and obviously a lot of other features. And a lot of that was great, but there were some drawbacks to it as well. One of the big complaints about that version of the mute is that it did not work for bass trombone. Um, and, you know, I've heard different people work around, you know, taking, putting duct tape and stuff, everything around it here. So one of the first things I was really excited to learn with the new uh, Yamaha, the SB5J here, is that it comes with a specific sleeve to fit bass trombone. So idea here is you've got your tenor trombone mute and then you go ahead, you put your sleeve on and now it works for uh, bass trombone. Now, how does it work? Well, I'll talk about it in a minute here, but just a great feature right off the bat because I, I tried a lot of options. I tried using like like the French horn silent brass in bass trombone. It just, it did not work. Um, this is a significant, significant improvement here. Um, but outside of that, you know, they really, at least as far as I understand, I certainly couldn't tell any major differences with the mute itself here. Um, but where we did see a lot of changes was in the, mod, the module here, uh, the personal studio, the STJ here. So, um, by the way, just kind of go through a quick walk around through what we get here. So we've got the mute itself. Um, and then of course we've got the sleeve for bass trombone here. Um, and then we've got our whole setup for the silent brass portion of it with the personal studio. So of course you get a pair of headphones, you've got the personal studio here. Um, you've got your mute connecting cord here. So this is just a, a standard um, 3.5 millimeter. Uh, mini jack here, uh, which is great. That comes in actually, that, that comes in handy. I can talk about my experience with silent brass and where just using this may come in handy for your know, other sizes of this may come in handy for other things. Um, and then this is one of the things that has changed with the new uh, personal studio is we have a, um, uh, a micro USB to USB connector here. And again, that is one of the innovations that they've made with the uh, new personal studio here. So, um, you know, certainly the personal studios have evolved a little bit over the years with the lay the, the previous generation of this, you know, they made a few tweaks. Really what they did more was improve the, um, you know, the sound reproduction itself. Um, and it was, it was a real improvement over the first version. Um, with the new generation, sound wise, I mean, I think they made some changes, but they've added a lot of different options onto this. And frankly, I think have made it a much more versatile module in a lot of ways here. So, um, like I mentioned, one of the big things is we have now a USB port here. So, one of the things a lot of us have done with the Silent Brass um, over the years is use it for uh, recording purposes, whether we're talking about running it through a um, like a pedal system, looping setup, whatever you've seen me do some stuff with that, um, you know, actually doing like some recording, like DAW recording, obviously live performance. Um, all of that has taken place and we've we've had to do a lot of jury rigging, you know, different setups with it. And so Yamaha, I think, again, very smartly said, well, a lot of people are using it for this reason. And frankly, I think one of the big things is for online lessons. Um, we've seen, I think, you know, people have obviously got very creative, tried to do a lot of different setups with their, with the online lesson setup. And so I think Yamaha saw an opportunity here to say, let's make this a really versatile setup for online lessons, plus everything else that people are doing. So we've got our 
USB output and input. So um, what this will do, again, with our with our cord there, is it will allow us to output this into whatever chosen device here. Again, this comes with a micro USB to USB, but it does, obviously, then you can adapt it to, you know, USB-C or, you know, lightning port, whatever you need to have. You They've got adapters for that. Um, and so what that does, again, not only lets you put into whatever, whatever type of system you want to be using with, but it actually will, you can play audio out of that system into the module as well. Um, so again, which is you know extremely handy. So if you've got, whether it's um, you've got recordings you're playing with, you're doing play alongs, whatever it is, you've got a back and forth versatility with it. Um, now, obviously we still have our auxiliary in here uh, port, which is just the standard 3.5 millimeter. Um, and then they've made a few changes on the, um, some of our setting options here. So we have the PLY, the AUD. So this is player or audience. And so the whole idea here is that it's two different sound modes. The player mode gives you the feedback as if kind of, you know, as you would expect what you would be hearing um, out in, you know, when you were in a performance setting um, and the audience mode um, changes it. So it puts it out like you're putting, you're experiencing your sound from out in the audience. And really the big idea, the way Yamaha describes it is that this is really designed more to give a more realistic um, experience whether you are using it for your own practice purposes or if you're using it for a performance purpose you know you turn it to the audience setting and that's giving a more realistic example of you know what is actually would be coming out the end of your bell uh, per se so again it's I'll, I'll talk about what I think about it, um, not having to been able to spend a lot of time with it, but I think it's a very clever idea. And then, of course, we've got our reverb settings because we have two different room hall settings. So we've got the room setting, which is basically more like a practice room. It's, it's fairly dead. And then we've got the hall setting, which is obviously much more reverberant. And then they give us reverb options within that. Um, and then up on top here, we've got our mute in port. So again, that's what you're plugging your 3.5 millimeter from the mute into. Um, then you've got your headphone port. And then we've got our two on uh, controls here. We've got the microphone input uh, volume, and then we've got the main volume um, output here. So what's my experience with all of this here? Um, first off, I think it, it played really well. Um, it, it played, like I said, the mute played very much I mean, like, I, I don't think they made any changes to the mute proper. It really played like the uh, prior prior generation did to this. Um, you know, sound response, it, it's good. I really like the Yamaha practice mutes. Um, we do get, just like it's a lot of practice mutes, but I do get a little bit more resistance with the Yamaha. It's not bad. I definitely put, put it in the upper echelon, but there is a little bit more pushback versus a couple of the other options out there. Um, one of the things I noticed with this, and I think it was more prominent than bass trombone. So tenor trombone felt very, very familiar to me. Um, a little bit of intonation squashing on the uh, upper register on tenor. Lower register, actually, it was better, I thought. Um, overall response slotting was fine. Lower register got a little bit stuffy. Bass trombone, I, I'm, I'm really glad we have it. Again, I think it's going to be a great option. And I think that you could learn to, especially if you want to use it for performance settings or, or just, you know, you want to have it to practice, etc. You could learn what needs to happen with the mute. What I found is with the bass trombone and... I used it with the new Yamaha YBL 835. Just, I wanted to give it a really fair comparison that if they're designing it around Yamaha trombones to start with, let's really give that experience. What I found uh, with it is that the upper register, everything slided really well. Interestingly, the second partial, so B flat, bottom staff, that whole partial was a little stuffy. It, it really did not want to center quite right. And then actually, once it got into trigger register, it improved significantly. Um, I thought it was it was quite a bit better through there. So, and again, I did, by the way, I did play around with different uh, places for the sleeve here as well, make sure that it was seated properly. Um, and it seemed like that maybe changed things slightly. So one of the questions I'm sure people are gonna ask is about the sleeve here. Like how, how that actually stays in the bass trombone. Do you have to worry about the mute falling off? And honestly, um, in my experience, because I really tried to a little bit, it was very, very stable. Um, the uh, material they use, it's, a, you know, it's like a very thick neoprene kind of material. Um, it was, you know, again, you put this on here, the collar sticks really well onto that. Um, I thought, like I said, I didn't have any issues with it, you know, falling up, moving around. But I did find, like, I think getting it seated improperly or properly did change the experience slightly with it. But it did have a little bit more 
you know, resistant in, like I said, especially that second partial register, a little bit different, but overall played well. I did also notice that the intonation getting down to the on pedal register, for example, pedal B flat was significantly sharper than it was on tenor trombone. So a few little differences, but um, overall, I, you know, I thought it played just fine, played really well. Like I said, I, I would put this mute in the, you know, upper third to quarter of the practice mutes out there. Um, now the sound module. Um, I thought the overall, you know, the, the overall sound itself was good. Um, obviously, it's not going to be able to recreate like a completely realistic sound, but I actually did think it was a little bit more lifelike than the last generation of it. Um, and I do appreciate the different, um, the different sound options, you know, the room, the hall, the reverb, you could definitely tell I preferred the hall myself. Um, not because I'm just a trauma player and I like to have reverb give the sound some life, but I thought it was actually just a... It was a little bit warmer sound. I felt like it was a little more characteristic sound. I felt like the room sound for me was almost, if it's weird to say, it's almost too dead. Like I felt like it didn't have quite the same processing to it. Um, but I appreciate it. And again, I think having some options in there. But where I think that really does shine is in all of the different options that it gives. Um, you know, as far as performance um, options, you know, being able to use it with your computer setup, whether you're using a DAW kind of setup. Um, if you're using it for live performance settings, I think they did a really, really nice job of kind of updating everything with that. And actually, I'm really excited about some of the options that this might bring for kind of ongoing online lessons. One of the things they mentioned um, with this is, so not only, you know, can you have your setup where, you know, you've got your mute running through here, obviously you've got your headphones. Um, the headphone uh, jack here is a two-way jack as well. So if you've got headphones, uh, like these that have got a microphone built in, you can use it. Um, you can use it to talk through the uh, module through the personal studio into whether you're using your computer, whatever you're using to to stream it to you know whatever platform you're using to work with a lesson. So you can have a true back and forth. Like so, if it really is all in one kind of it is a an online lesson studio setup. All you really need then is whatever dice device you're going to be you know, streaming from, you know, Teams, Zoom, whatever it is. Um, and so I think that is, I think that's very, very creative uh, and clever. I think it, in Yamaha, frankly, they've in, you know, pandemic, post-pandemic, I think they've done a number of really, really great things to recognize kind of where certain aspects of, you know, especially music education, um, music creation has changed and really trying to adapt some stuff to whether it's stuff like this, you know, they had um, some of their work with the, um, the, uh, electronic saxophones on um, that actually I think really had a place through some of that. So in conclusion, I think it's a really, really great setup, a great addition to what Yamaha has already done with a really great option for brass players. And of course, by, by the way, we don't want to leave it out here. This, we, the, this is available for all of our brass players, you know, going all the way down to uh, tuba here as well. So we've got options for everybody. Um, and it's great. Like I said, it's not a hugely different performing setup overall. The mute I still plays really well. I, I'm really glad they added bass trombone, um, the ability for bass trombones to use it. It's going to be huge. Uh, as far as that goes, that was something we were really missing with the setup. Um, and I do really appreciate all of the innovations with the personal studio. Um, and I think, like I said, they've taken what a lot of us have already used as a very versatile setup, and they've really made it next level. So really appreciate you watching the video. If you have any experience with the new Silent Brass setup or one of the previous Silent Brass setups, we'd love to hear about that. Share your experiences um, in the comments here. If you like the video, consider giving it a thumbs up. Of course, you can check out all of the other videos on the channel. Subscribe to our channel if you like. We'd love to have you as a part of our community. And of course, you can always find the Trombone Shop on Facebook and Instagram. As always, thanks for watching.